Long live Captain Jack Sparrow. Well, Johnny Depp won his defamation suit against Amber Heard, and technically, I guess she won her countersuit against him, although for a much smaller amount. I think it was, we got like $10 million. Well, I guess I've been corrected. What something that the, the $2 million that Amber Heard won was, I guess, for something that one of Johnny Depp's attorneys had said the jury returned back saying that she had been defamed, I guess, by his legal team. And so she got he Johnny Depp got ten million in compensatory damages and I think five million in um five million in punitive damages. And then it got reduced down to like 250 or 350,000 which I think is the, the the limit. So the jury was sending a message that Amber you really fucked up. And I think you you were saying something about the the video here, the look on her face a second yeah, ago. Yeah, she just looks like she knows her life is over now. Like she looks super guilty now. It was hard to tell during, you know, the reading the verdict what were they looking at was Johnny Depp looking straight at her at some point and she just Well, he was supposedly he says your eyes will never look into my eyes ever again. And she through the whole trial was looking over at him a lot and he never once looked in her direction, won't make eye contact with her. He's like cuz he said that you'll 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 our eyes will never meet again. Well, it looked like during the read of the, of the verdict, like he was looking at her. I don't know. I may be wrong. He, well, Depp wasn't there. Oh, he was in a. Uh, he was drinking in a pub. I think you're in the right. UK. He was on another. He was on another set. He had a. He had a gig. He was actually working. But supposedly, when it was read, I think he was at, at the at a local pub there near someplace in England, okay. chilling, having a, a frothy beverage. Okay, yeah, no, there was one point where I was watching this, um, you know, like split camera and it showed her face and, and she was just like staring into nowhere about to break down and cry. And he looked like he was, they made it look like he was looking at her. And I assume that was reading of, you know, verdicts, but um, I stand corrected and maybe he is never going to look in her eyes again. I, well, I saw that in an article, and people were pointing that out, that he just won't look in her direction because he does not want to make eye contact with her because he's basically saying, I'll never look in your eyes again. And people have been saying publicly that she still is in love with Johnny and would want to get back together with him. Yeah, I don't know if that's no. true or not, or people are speculating that, but I did watch you know, the, some of the trial that I did see. is like she was looking over in his direction and looking at him a lot. And he never looked at yeah, her. Yeah, no, I don't think that's the best way to go about it if that was the case. No. Well, the the thing that took the cake was the, uh, the, I mean, we did that in the last video, which is doing real well on Facebook, the one where um, she was acting out the part from the talented Mr. Ripley. I mean, literally word for word, the words that came out of Gwyneth Paltrow's mouth and the role in, in that movie. And so she's literally making up fake testimony from a movie part yeah just and hearing switching you it to, remind me of that it, i'm just uncomfortable because it was just such an awkward awkward it was a moment. bad acting job too i mean uh, literally acting out something gwyneth paltrow did in a movie for her testimony about johnny depp yeah i i think the most interesting thing about this though was looking at the people's reaction just you know they it's like they can't wait to see Johnny Depp back in the movies. everybody's rooting for him i I hope he starts charging more since those people dropped him so quickly, so he better charge two times what he was getting paid before. I just don't know why no one actually saw this coming like for me, this was no surprise that Johnny Depp was gonna win, but then again, that's my opinion, but I don't know. Amber Heard from the start was not doing so hot anyway. She looked dodgy. He didn't believe her. No, I didn't. She, j it, I just saw it coming. Like for me, it didn't come shocking for Depp to actually win the case. That's so. probably why he was at the pub, just drinking, eating. So he a good probably time. he probably knew. knew. Yeah. He was just like, uh, <laughs> why should I even show up? Like, it's no news to him. That's awesome. That's a great way to do it. 
Yeah. Being at a bar, having a drink, maybe a sandwich. Probably, everyone's <laughs> probably cheering him on too at the bar. Yeah. Well, I saw him leaving the bar, and there were people out that had their cell phones, and they were, you know, guys were fist bumping him and cheering him on. So I wish we it's like the, he's yeah. like he. The whole world looks at him completely different now. And then he, it, it, what's interesting is he read a statement. Um, we should pull that up real quick. So Johnny Depp's statement after he wins, he says. Six years ago, my life, the life of my children, the lives of those closest to me, and also the lives of the people who for many, many years have supported and believed in me were forever changed. All in the blink of an eye, false, very serious, and criminal allegations were levied at me via the media, which triggered an endless barrage of hateful content, although no charges were ever brought against me. It had already traveled around the world twice within a nanosecond, and it had a seismic impact on my life and my career. And six years later, the jury gave me my life back. I am truly humbled. My decision to pursue this case, knowing very well the height of the legal hurdles that I would be facing and the inevitable worldwide spectacle into my life, was only made after considerable thought. From the beginning, the goal of bringing this case was to reveal the truth regardless of the outcome. Speaking the truth was something that I owed to my children and to all those who have remained steadfast in their support of me. I feel at peace having I feel at peace knowing I have finally accomplished that. I am and have been overwhelmed by the outpouring of love and the colossal support and kindness from around the world. I hope that my quest to have the truth be told will have helped others, men or women, who have found themselves in my situation and those supporting them never give up. I also hope that the position will now return to innocent until proven guilty, both when, both within the courts and in the media. I wish to acknowledge the noble work of the judge, the jurors, the court staff, and the sheriffs who have sacrificed their own time to get to this point, and to my diligent and unwavering legal team, who did an extraordinary job in helping me to share the truth. The best is yet to come, and a new chapter has finally begun. Yeah. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, Veritas numquam parrot. Truth never perishes. Long live Captain Jack Sparrow. So you want to finish the discussion? You guys got anything else to add to Johnny Depp? No, other than it, I saw it coming. It was not a shock to me. I think his Basically statement that. was really well written. It was a beautiful thing that he said, you know, very honest, um, humble. It really shows his character. Very expressive. Yeah. You're, on, you're on Team Captain Jack Sparrow? Yes, Captain mm -hmm. Jack Sparrow. And you want to see another Pirates mm -hmm. of the Caribbean movie? Oh, hell yeah. And an Alice in Wonderland. So, yeah, Bob... Chapek, if you're listening, you need to quadruple Captain Jack Sparrow's payday. Give him a big cut of the movie, whatever it takes to get him. And everybody else that was in the Orlando Bloom, um, who, was, who was the other one? Kira Knightley. Knightley. Any, anybody that was in the original, you, whatever you gotta, it costs to get him on there, you owe that to him. You guys, you guys dicked him over hard. You know, Kind of like what they Disney did with Jon Favreau. Um, allowing, um, what's her name, Gina Carano to be run out by Kathleen Kennedy like that and dicked over all because differing political beliefs. And now, you know, they let their leading lady just get filleted by this, you know, wacky leftist Kathleen Kennedy who's running some of the Star Wars franchises, gets her fired from The Mandalorian. And apparently she's been rehired and Kathleen Kennedy's kind of mostly out of the picture now. But that was just unconscionable lack of masculinity on the CEO of Disney's part, John Favreau, and the other guy, um, Dave Filoni, I think, who who works on those. They allowed their leading lady to get dicked over by Kathleen Kennedy. It's like you don't you don't leave your people on a battlefield. You only leave your fucking teammates in the battlefield, and that's basically what they did to Gina Carano and to Captain Jack Sparrow and. Bob Chapek needs to write the fucking check, dude. You need to do whatever it takes to make it right. And also, Alice in Wonderland? 
Yeah, Alice in Wonderland, yeah. Yeah, we need a sequel to that. So you, you better bow down and kiss Captain Jack Sparrow's feet and apologize and prostrate yourself and whatever it takes to get him back on board because you owe us some more good movies. And chances are it's going to come back to you anyway. Yeah. Especially yeah. now. Maybe, maybe not at like a Top Gun level, but it's going to come back. Well, I mean, it's interesting. The Top Gun opening, uh, it was still less than the... It was the Pirates of the Caribbean or Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales or I can't remember which one. It was like I don't know, ten, fifteen years ago, I think two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Mm-hmm. That I think that hit like one hundred fifty three million for an opening holiday weekend. It still holds a record, but keep in mind it was fifteen years ago. Yeah. So Top Gun, I think it came in at one one hundred fifty one million, which is okay. great. Happy for Tom Cruise. That's the, awesome. The That's new pretty one close. That yeah. Came out? It was yeah. amazing. <clears throat> but yeah, I hope these people realize what what they did. To Jack, to Johnny himself. Got to take care of Captain Jack. Got to make it right. Yeah. Now let's hear what this turd said in her statement. Well, why don't you go ahead and read it, <laughs> Amber Turd. The turd locker. Uh, okay. The disappointment I feel today is beyond words. I'm heartbroken that the mountain of evidence still was not enough to stand up to the Disproportionate. Disproportionate power. Influence and sway of my ex-husband. I'm even more disappointed with what this verdict means for other women. It is a setback. It sets back the clock at a time when a woman who spoke up and spoke out could be publicly shamed and humiliated. It It sets back the idea that violence against women is to be taken seriously. I believe Johnny's attorneys succeeded in getting the jury to overlook the key issue of freedom of speech and ignore evidence that was so conclusive that we won in the UK. I'm sad I lost this case, but I am sadder still that I still that I seem to have lost a right I thought I had as an American to speak freely and open, openly. I couldn't see the bottom. <laughs> I was struggling a little bit. So Dr. Taylor Burroughs, who I think has a lot of great things to say, she has a similar outlook on dating and relationships in life that I do and things that I teach. And I loved her comment here. This was her response to Amber Heard's statement. She says, you're not free to destroy someone's life with a lie built on a distorted imagination, defense mechanisms, and misdirected malice, no matter how valid your feelings feel to you. It's kind of like uh, your f- f- our feelings don't matter, facts over feelings. You know, it's kind of a home run statement because built into it, you know, distorted imagination. You know, um, I think that, you know, Amber Heard actually thinks that she was right in a lot of ways. You know, forget the fact that she brought out the worst in Johnny Depp at times. Forget that she instigated things and set him up and set up a camera to try to make him look bad and then, you know, poked him until he snapped a little bit. Um, I, I think that short, concise statement says a whole bunch. And you do, Amber, you do have free speech. That doesn't mean there's not going to be consequences for the things that you say. You have free yeah. speech. There's, we're not taking your free speech away. Use it all you want, but don't be stupid. If you do, it's on you. She's just saying it because it wasn't of benefit for her. So that's why she's a little upset. So She's trying to absolve herself from any personal responsibility. I mean, she tried to wreck his life. That was, it was pretty obvious to the jury when you get up and you perform in front of them, basically, and recite a bunch of lines from a movie as if it's your own personal testimony. Because she's obviously trying to manipulate the jury with something that was totally fake and contrived and made up. It was absurd. Yeah, you, you didn't <clears throat> set back women's rights. What you did is you um, well, the leveled be- the field believe a little all, bit. Believe all women, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, well, in this case, Amber showed that that's not accurate because mm-hmm. she's a fucking liar. It's obvious. You yeah, yeah. it kind of makes me upset that she wants to use the whole Violence Against Women Act. Like, you're making us look bad because, like, the, mm. the one time that, like, we're actually right and we're actually fighting for something that's meant to be, you know, changed, she's kind of making us look like... What everyone else thinks, like, oh, women just lie, they lie. about everything. They yeah. made it up. They mm-hmm. like, over-exaggerate. Like, she hooked up with that guy. She had a few too many cocktails, and now yeah, she wants yeah. to blame it on him. 
that she didn't go along with it. Yet she went home with him to his house and took her clothes off with him and spent the night and woke up. And then a couple of days later afterwards decided that. Yeah, she's overusing her power. And I just. That's why I, I feel when it comes to us women, when we uh, talk about whether it be like abuse or whatever the case may be, that's why a lot of people sometimes don't believe us mm-hmm. because things like this happen. Yeah. And yeah. It's yeah there, there's she's a, a lot of. She's a female juicy there's, sommelier. There's actually women out there that are actually going through that abuse, and it's just really sad that because, like I said, like because of stuff like that, nobody believes them, and they're actually going through abuse, mm-hmm. and it's apparent. And she thinks it's okay to just like put it out there and make it seem like she actually cares when she really doesn't. She's mm-hmm. just trying to get a benefit. She's for making herself. herself look like a clown yeah. for no reason. I do not like that. And there's a lot of disgusting men out there that need to be locked up and and need to be exposed for the things they do. And we're glad they are. Um, and then there's things that we've seen over the years where people, uh, you know, I think of uh, Cuomo, governor of New York. I'm glad he's not the governor of New York anymore. I didn't like him. I didn't like his policies. But I, I you know, they tried to make him look at like, you know, some kind of, you know, uh, sex abuser. Um, I think he liked women and he probably didn't realize how friendly pickup. he was. He's a bad pickup artist. Yeah, but but you know, it, it, it's I a scene. Like- I think the, he got off though. I think the cases that were brought against him got dismissed or something. The ones that were led to him stepping down. Yeah, we're seeing I, we're seeing an, a, a new tide here, a new wave of you know, no, this you know, let's let's make things right, and let's expose the truth, not um, just assume in every case the man is the bad guy. Yeah. Yeah, because even men can get abused too. Like this is, you know, living proof that it can happen. Granted, you know, based on experiences and based on things I've heard, I feel like women do get more abuse than men do. But then again, I don't know the stats, but it does go to show that even men can get abused too. So abuse and mistreatment and manipulation really has no gender at the end of the day. Yeah, she went to the media, got the ACLU involved in writing that article, and it was. And she even admitted on the, st- the stand that she was in- involved in it, so it's like she incriminated herself. Mm-hmm. It was obvious that the, the article she admitted was it was her doing. Johnny, we love you, Johnny. We love, uh, jo- Johnny, 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 I love you, bro. I love you, bro. I love you, bro. I love you. <laughs> Johnny. Love you, Johnny. We love you, Johnny. We love uh, jo- Johnny. Johnny, Johnny, I love you, bro. I love you, bro. I love you, bro. I love- you got it. Johnny, Johnny. Do you find that Mr. Depp has proven all the elements of defamation? Answer, yes. As against Amber Heard, we, the jury, award compensatory damages in the amount of $10 million. As against Amber Heard, we, the jury, award punitive damages in the amount of $5 million. So where does this money come from? Does it come from her pocket or like where, where does that? Yeah, she's got to write the check. Oh, wow. So she defamed him. And so the idea is that her defaming him cost him another role with Pirates of the Caribbean, the Fantastic Beasts movie. Mm-hmm. Potentially the Alice in Wonderland, Alice in Wonderland mm-hmm. sequel, and so he got a compensatory. In other words, he had real losses of income because mm-hmm. of that article coming out and saying I got defamed and it wrecked my career. I literally cost me money, which it did. Movie roles, yeah. And the other, the other was for punitive. In other words, it was like punishment mm-hmm. because it was so malicious. But I guess it had a statutory limit of like is either 250,000 or 350,000 mm-hmm. so the judge reduced it to that so in total Johnny Depp won like 10 million plus the 250,000 and then less I think the, the 2 million that Amber Heard won in the countersuit because of Johnny's attorney so he's owed she owes him something like 8 million plus she's got to pay all of her attorney's fees so mm-hmm. and apparently they're, they're, she's claiming she doesn't have it oh gosh and they're going to appeal it you and, know what sorry I was going to say, in the reading of that verdict, like normally you would see a couple drop jaws, some surprise, and I didn't see that at all. I saw everyone just like sitting there listening. That's exactly what we expected. And somewhere, I think it was, um, didn't John Depp say something like, uh, well, he said, I got my life back. I feel like I got my life back. Something to that effect. I thought it was neat. I saw uh, Kyle Rittenhouse tweet 
you know, I feel you, bro, or something like that. It was, <laughs> you know, I know exactly what you're talking about. But yeah, apparently he's gonna because he ha- he's holding off on or has been on some of the suits because you got people like Whoopi Goldberg and some of these other famous actors, actresses, pundits that have gone out publicly and you know called Kyle Rittenhouse all these names and they called him a murderer and all these things when he was not he was acquitted by a jury of his peers so he's not guilty and so for them to go and defame him because he's you know he was a young kid he was underage at the time and they're basically can make the claim that you've damaged anytime for the rest of his life Kyle Rittenhouse goes to apply for a job they're going to go somebody's going to do a google search what's going to come up Whoopi Goldberg and other people saying he's a white supremacist he's a murderer or, well all the you know whatever the things were that they they said about him and so you the the justification is that, that he's been his reputation is damaged so if he goes to apply for a job the job's going to pay him a couple hundred grand a year but they say oh well Oh, you're the you're you're that guy that you know that murderer that got off. Mm-hmm. We can't hire a murderer to come work for us. Now he's missing out on that two hundred thousand dollar a year job. I want to appeal to Kyle Rittenhouse when you um, you know, get a settlement offer. If you choose to settle out of court, don't let there be that that clause in there that says you're not allowed to disclose the terms of the settlement. Let it be only in full disclosure. Let them settle because they know that they're wrong. They're giving you an, uh, an offering to say, you're right, we're wrong. Um, it's going to cost us more in court. Uh, but there's going to be, they're going to want the terms that you're not allowed to disclose the details. Please say no. We want to know the details. You deserve for the people to know the details. You deserve for the people to know your innocence.